archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. trip into the depths of Bhitar Konika begins. The next ten days will be spent here, a forest that often reminds one of the alluvial deposits of the Brahmani, the Boitaruni and the Dhamra rivers. Conditions are saline and brackish in which 72 species of mangroves grow. It is the growing tip of the ever-increasing delta formed by the alluvial sundabans. Mangroves, narrow creeks, foliage bending over the water, the launch chugs along, the voyage ends. A long trek through the bush, silence perhaps pregnant with expectations of a sudden appearance from the jungle. The forest is a habitat for many birds from far and near. Our arrival disturbs a black-winged stilt. A herd of deer bolts unexpectedly, their spotted backs glistening in the afternoon sun. A wild bear hits the scene. Suddenly, the deer are alarmed. Warning calls are sounded, and there is panicky movement. Mystified, one of the daring ones venture close to us. The others have retreated. A community lunch in progress, and also it is time to relax. The deer munch the grass. Some lounge around lazily. There is no carnivore around. They can take it easy. The young ones gamble and engage in mock fights. Small horns. No problem. The horns of a deer are a wonderful affair. In a young deer, the horn is a simple spike. As the deer grows, it throws out tines or branches and eventually takes the form of antlers. The number of tines vary from species to species. Adult samba, spotted deer, and hog deer have three tines to each antler. The Kashmir stag, swamp deer, and the brown antlered deer have multi-branched antlers. There is a connection between food and the growth of antlers. It is also a part of the deer's defense mechanism. beautiful cheetal is one of the most widely distributed wild mammals of India, with a safe status at present because of its high rate of reproduction 
and ecological adaptability. Hunting hurts ecology because deer is the basic food of the large carnivores which take to cattle killing and man-eating when deprived of their natural prey. Watch it. When two of them circle around each other, a battle is in the offing. Cautious steps. Who gives the first blow? The cheetal is one of the most tolerant, accommodating and sociable of all the varieties of our deer. But what is the young fellow jumping about for? Waiting to watch a good combat? Assam is a paradise for wildlife. Yet in recent times, political disturbances have caused habitat problems for wildlife. And there is concern but migratory birds have not fled away. Large flocks of them still pay their annual visit to the state's forest areas. A major asset of Assam is the large number of water bodies that provide birds and some animals with a good haven. In the Kaziranga sanctuary, several varieties of birds, including the open-billed stork, gray heron, pond heron, are still visible. In winter, plenty of ducks and teals show up. We are at the famous pelican colony of Kaziranga. These are tall trees where they build their nests to lay eggs and raise their chicks. The nests are like platforms and several may be built atop the same tree. It is a safe haven for the birds because there is no apparent fear of poaching here. The only threat is the python. Quite a few of them stay close by because of the easy availability of food. Whenever they get a chance, they gobble the eggs. But the birds are wonderful to watch. The chicks cry almost like human babies. When they are thirsty, the mother bird brings drinking water in her beaks. Remember the old limerick? A wonderful bird is the pelican, whose beak holds more than his belly can. Who's that foraging around? A rhino. The thin ground mist that blurs the view somewhat is peculiar to the area in the morning. A few pelicans spread their wings and relax by the water.
Here are the famed wild buffaloes of Kaziranga. Powerful and fierce by nature, they are dreaded by man and other creatures. They can, however, be approached on elephant back unless one ventures too close. But one has to keep away from solitary bulls, which are unpredictable and often charge without provocation. Present in great numbers are the Brahmini ducks, revered by local people. They are seldom shot by hunters. They live in pairs. The myth goes that each pair is very much in love and one cannot live without the other. The winter birds are a lovely sight. They take to their wings in flocks and fly up and land again as if in waves, keeping up a constant chatter. There's plenty of food for them in the ponds and no poachers, so it's a good place to visit. On a misty morning in Kaziranga, one can see a lot. We sighted this herd of swamp deer grazing and wading through water, but very shy of men. We were not lucky on the day. After the swamp deer, no other creature obliged us with an appearance till the sun went down. Now, off to Chilika. Our boat slithers across the water. The hills in the distance sit like somber witnesses. Separated from the Bay of Bengal by a narrow sandbar, Chilika spreads over 425 square miles of shallow water. The period between December and March is the best time for a visit. Nearly 150 varieties of birds can be sighted here, according to the DFO, Mr. Jolod Hartwadhan. Among them, the dominant varieties are the Shavala, Flamingo, Spot-Built Dick, Grey Flover, Fantail Snipe, Whistling Teal, Purple Heron, Golden Plover, Little Cororant, and Marsh Harrier. For the eyes of the bird watcher, it is a veritable feast. As we go along, the only sound we hear is the monotonous purring of our boat engine and the delightful flutter of the thousands of wings all around us. Up and down they fly, as if celebrating the day, celebrating the simple fact that they are alive, that nature is bountiful and life is good. There are hundreds of thousands of them covering the water as far as the eye stretches. For one who has been long pent up in the city, it's a marvelous relief. The flamingo feeds in water with its slender neck down between the legs, with the head completely submerged. It looks for worms, larvae, seeds of marsh plants. Their flocks fly in a V formation or in a single line. There is the lesser flamingo found also in the run of Kutch in Gujarat, which strays to various inland water spreads. 
The large egret is, however, found throughout the country. Usually solitary creatures, they feed in jeels, marshes and rivers, looking for fish, frogs and small reptiles. They come here from all over the country, some from far away. Many birds are migratory, but some are residents. Sunset on Chilica is a wonderful moment. The birds are still on their wings, perhaps on the last sortie for the day. The sky turns pale as night approaches. Another beautiful day winds up over Chilica. Chilica, Assam or elsewhere, birds are ever present. Their variety is bewildering as their presence is delightful. According to one estimate, there are as many as 1,200 species of birds in India and there are few places where you do not hear them chirping as you get up in the morning. But attacks on the environment have made an impact. Denudation of forests and extension of agriculture has changed the pattern of avifauna. Seed-eating birds like larks and finches have multiplied while woodpeckers have diminished in number. During our rambling, we came across many varieties. Doyles, Fings, Common Babbler, Jungle Miner. A whole host of them spread out widely. It is said that birds could do without men, but man would perish without birds. But for the birds, trees would perish, and but for the trees, the entire ecological chain would snap. Another morning, another voyage in the company of the ranger and a friendly crew. We told him to stop the launch whenever anything interesting was sighted. He agreed, but warned us never to dip our fingers in the water. The creek was infested with crocodiles, and he did spot something exciting. Is that not a deer lying in water, he queries? The launch headed for the spot. Yes, it was. A deer trapped in marine vegetation, unable to extricate itself. Any moment, a crocodile's jaws might break its vertebra. The launch was taken close to it with great difficulty. Branches were cut, creepers removed. It was not easy. The deer initially panicked, fearing that it was being led into another trap. Yeah. 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 
Actually, on the way to Dangma, I have seen him. I have identified that, uh, that the deer was laying very near to close to the um, water. I just uh, in my mind uh, there is a, a doubt has been raised that uh, whether it is uh, laying there on its own accord or uh, somebody uh, made an injury to him. So I want to know that. That's why. Two times, sir. ये जो एक एक बार एक दिन और हम तो पाँव आ जो ये था पानी में तो था और इसको ऊपर ले आया था और दूसरा बार यहाँ इसको उठाया आज We are in the vastness of the jungles of Tripura. This little hill state was once famous for its wildlife, especially the famous spectacled monkey, which from a distance appears to be wearing glasses. Sadly, the species is facing extinction thanks to the greed of humans. A few specimens are still available here and there. Will they multiply and the species survive? Man alone can answer that question.